Welcome to Akal Stories. Today we'll be launching our new show with me, Dipjit Ko, and me, Amanpreet Ko, and also our two guests, Gunul Ko and Kultar Singh. So, first let's start off with the Gur Mantar and the Mool Mantar. So, Gunul, what is the Gur Mantar? The Gur Mantar is when you say Vahigur. Yeah. So we'll do the Guru Mantra five times and then we'll move straight on the Moon Mantra. So please, everybody join in with us. Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Ekaunkar Satinam Karta Purakha. Well done everybody. Now let's move on to the Sikh general knowledge. Kultar, what do I mean by the Sikh general knowledge? Well the Sikh general knowledge is the basic facts that all a Sikh should know. Yeah, so we'll start off with the Das Guru and then now. Pali <laughs> Atmi <laughs> Jar Sahib Zadde Adena Baba Ajit Singhji Baba Jujar Singhji Baba Zorwar Singhji Baba Fateh Singhji Panch Kakar Kes, Kanga, Kera, Kirpan, Kishaira Three Golden Rules Naam Japo, Kirt Karo, Vand Kishako Naam Japo means Doing part Kirt Karo means Honest hard work and Vand Kishako means Sharing well done everybody, so you've done all our Sikh general knowledge, the Guru Mantar and the Mool Mantar. So let's um, move on to, the, to today's topic. So Amanpri, what is today's topic? Today's topic is all about Shri Guru Ram Das Ji, our fourth Guru. Yeah, so we're going to be answering lots of questions like who, what, where, why and how. So for now we'll say... Um, Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh to the guests and we'll meet you a bit later on. So let's learn about Shri Guru Ram Das Ji. So let's learn a few basic facts about Shri Guru Ram Das Ji. So Amanpreet, would you like to start? Of course. So they will he was born in Junna Mandi, Lahore in 1534. His father was Hardashji. And his mother was Mata Deya Korji. He had a wife and her name was Bibi Paniji. He also had three sons, Baba Prithijanji, Baba Mahadevji, and the youngest Shri Guru Arjun Devji, our fifth Guru. And his Jyoti Jyot was when he was 47 years old and that's very young, don't you think? Yes. And it was in the year 1581. So let's learn about, about their childhood. Sure. So Ram Dasji was his name, but as a nickname, everybody used to call him Jitaji because he was the oldest. And do you know when you go to India, sometimes your father may be called something else like Kaka or Chotu or Jetha, something like that. Well, they all mean different things, don't they? What yes. does Kaka mean? Kaka means the youngest. And Jetha means? The eldest. And Chotu obviously also means the youngest. So that's exactly how Ram Dasji was called Jitaji, the eldest. 
And when he was very young, his mother passed away. And when he was only seven years old, his father also passed away. So at the age of seven, he had no parents. How would you feel if you had lost your parents? I would feel devastated because I love my parents so much. I know, but Ram Dastri was so brave, wasn't he? Because he carried on with his life. So he only had his grandma left now. So gra his grandma and, uh, took him to Basuke. And Basuke was his nanika. So what, do, what is a nanika? A nanika is where your mum was brought up when she was young. Yeah, so that's where they went. And over there they met Guru Amar Das Ji, the third guru. And um, Guru Amar Das Ji, whenever he saw someone in trouble or someone who needed help in life, he, he would always help them. And he, and he knew that Ram Das Ji had been in troubled times, he had lost both of his parents and he was trying to carry on with his life. And he was only small, wasn't he, Amanpreet? Yes, he was only seven years old, remember? So, Guru Amar Das Ji used to help him a lot. And at a young age, he sold boiled chickpeas. And he spent five years with his grandma in Basarke. And then in 1546, Shri Guru Amar Das Ji, they created a new city called Goindwal. And there, all of Shri Guru Amar Das Ji's followers, including Jitaji and his grandmother, went to Goindwal. And there, Guru Amar Das Ji set up a base of education and Jitaji attended that. And as well as learning at the base of education, he did a lot of seva. And by seva, we mean he was always helpful, always kind, always humble. When he saw someone in trouble, he would always help them as well. If he saw an elderly who needed help, he would go and help. So that's how kind he was. And then he was also very inspired by music, wasn't he, Dibji? Yes, he was, and that was part of his, that was part of his education. So, Amanpreet, could you tell us a little fact about his um, hobby? Yes, he was inspired by music, as we just said. And over his lifetime, he created Banis in 30 different rags. And at the time of Shri Guru Ram Das Ji, there were only 30 rags. Now there are 31 rags because Guru Teg Bahadur Ji, our ninth Guru, put another rag in. But at that time, to write Banis in 30 different rugs, in all the rugs that were there, that's amazing, don't you yes, think? Yes, it was an, am an amazing accomplishment, wasn't it? It was. And Amanpri, we, th we do Gizin as well, and we do them in rugs as well, don't we? Yes. And we're kind of like copying out of books and all of them. But it's really hard, because we know it's really hard to learn them. And if you're making it up yourself... That must be really, really hard proper hard. So that's how amazing um, Ram Das Ji was. So let's learn a bit about their married life. Bibi Bani Ji, his daughter, was the eldest and, he, and it, she was so beloved. And she had, she had a great interest in all those things. She, was, she loved doing seva, didn't she? And so in 1553, the following year, Ram Das Ji and Bibi Bani Ji got married. And so let's talk about Bibi Bani Ji's personality. So what was she like? Bibi Bani Ji was beautiful, intelligent and well educated. And she actually helped a lot in Seva, like Jitta Ji, Guru Ram Das Ji. Yeah. And at that time, um, there used to be Guru's Darbar. And lots of people from different states and cities used to come and settle there. And they would normally stay over. And there were long lungers and everything. And he needed lots of help at that time. So what happened was... Bibi Bani Ji looked after all these people that came and stayed. She would look after their food, if they had dried, dried bed sheets, if they, what, everything that she could try to help, she would do everything that she could. And also she was very beautiful, wasn't she? Yeah, she was very beautiful. And so them two made a perfect match. And so between themselves, they had three sons, Baba Prithijan Ji, Baba Mahadev Ji, and Shri Guru Arjun Dev Ji. And so then, and then let's talk about those three's personality, should we? Because we need to know what they were like. So why don't you talk about Baba Prithijan Ji's personality? So Baba Prithijan Ji was, had lots of responsibilities. He was in responsible of the accounts and money. And he always liked to have lots of responsibilities. And he did all the seva, tried to find things that he could do. But he only did this because his eye was only on the Gurgaddi. He wanted to be Guru. That's why he only did these things. Otherwise, he wouldn't do any of these things, would he? No. So what was Baba Mahadevji's personality? 
Baba Mahadev Ji was totally opposite was to he? Baba Prithi Chand Ji, but not like Guru Arjan Dev Ji. He was somewhere in the middle. He wasn't very bad. He wasn't very good. He didn't really care about anything. He didn't want to become a problem or be part of a problem. He didn't do much seva and his eye wasn't on the Guru Gaddi. So he was somewhere in the middle. And now let's talk about Guru Arjan Dev Ji's personality. And his personality was the best because he was perfect. He had all the qualities that a Guru, uh, guru would needed need. and like. Um, confidence. Humble. Intelligence and lots of other qualities um, which we, could, we can make a long list of, couldn't we? Yes. So that's why they, he became Guru in, um, and he, he is now our fifth Guru, isn't he? Yes. So those are the personalities of the three Gurus. So Amanpreet, I'd like to hear a Sakhi from you. Um, something about them, maybe about their confidence or intelligence. Because we all want to really hear a Sakhi. I love Sakhis. So I'll hand it over to you. Okay, so I've got a little Sakhi about one of the tasks that Guru Amar Das Ji gave to Ram Das Ji. And you might know that Guru Amar Das Ji had two daughters. So that means he had two son-in-laws. Yeah. And both of the son-in-laws were very, very worthy of the Guru Gaddi. Yeah. So both of them would be given different tasks and Guru Amar Das Ji would see who fulfilled them the best. And so this is a story about one of the tasks that Ram Das Ji was given by Guru Amar Das Ji. So at the time of Guru Amar Das Ji when they were Guru, um, there was Sangat. So basically what is Sangat Ji? Sangat is a group of Sikhs. Yes. And basically in that time you would eat longer together. So the upper class people and the lower class people would eat together on the same level. And it was to show equality, wasn't it? Yes. And the upper class people thought that was very bad because they believed that the upper class people should not be anywhere near the lower class people. Really? Yes. And so the upper an upper class man went to complain to Akbar and the Ji who was Akbar? Akbar was the king at that time. And so the upper class man complained that look they're eating together, the upper class people and the lower class people. That's a disgrace to our religion. And, but Akbar wasn't satisfied and he wanted to hear the other side of the story. So Akbar sent a messenger to Guru Amar Das Ji's Darbar. And there the messenger said that Ak Akbar has had a complaint about lung your Langar and your Sangat. And so um, he wants to hear your side of the story. And so the messenger go goes and Guru Amar Das Ji thinks that this is a very good task, task for Ram Das Ji. So he calls Guru Ram Das Ji, tells him about what they need to do, what he needs to do, and gives him his blessings and gives him a Sangat, so a group of Sikhs to go with him. And Dibji, do you know who was there at Akbar's palace with him at the time? No, I don't. Could you tell us? There were judges, there were priests, and there in front of him was Akbar. So there are wow. loads of important people that I wouldn't think of, think of meeting. So like me meeting the Queen. Yeah, that would be amazing because if you were meeting the Queen and you had to go and tell her that you're wrong, that would be so amazing. I mean, standing up for yourself. Yes. Amazing. And Ram Das Ji explained to Akbar that we believe in equality because we're all the same in the eyes of God. And... Guru Ram Das Ji explained to him in a really great way. And when Guru Ram Das Ji left, Akbar thought to himself that maybe he's right. Yeah. Maybe we should believe in this. And after a few months of thinking about it, he went to Guru Amar Das Ji's Darbar. And do you know who he went with, Dibji? He went with his army, his, all his important people, so they'd like the judges, the priests. Wow. And his family went as well. But Guru Amar Das Ji did not let Akbar meet him because Guru Amar Das Ji believed that first Bangat and then Sangat. So Dibji, what does Bangat mean? Bangat means equality. And Sangat? Sangat means um, going into Guru's Darbar. Yes. And so Akbar actually accepted this and he went to eat with all the lower caste people, maybe even his servants. And he ate with, so he did Bangat and then he went to meet Guru Amar Das Ji. So that's an amazing story and Guru Ram Das Ji actually explained to Akbar in such a great way that Akbar actually wanted to believe in this. It's amazing isn't it how confident he was about everything and he actually fulfilled what Guru Amar Das Ji had told him to do. So that task was completed by, 
by Ram Das Ji. So what was the moral of this story, Dibji? I, um, well, the moral of the story is that you need confidence for everything, don't you? Yes, of course you do. And so could you tell us an, another task, that something that was given by Guru Ram Das, Amar Das Ji to Ram Das Ji? Yes, of course. So Guru Amar Das Ji believed that in order for the Sikh nation, the Sikh religion to increase and for more people to learn about the Sikh religion, they would need to create a new city, make people settle there and name it. So, so what happened? First they dug up the Sarovar and uh, they did all of that, didn't they? And then they started to build the city. First they named it Guru Kachak, then it was named Chak Ram Das, and now it's known as Amritsar. Amritsar. So yes, that's what I'm telling you. Amritsar was created by Ram Das Ji. Isn't yes. that amazing? Yes, of course. And so lots of people from other cities came and settled in Amritsar. And there were lots of types of people, like they did all like um, types of jobs. Like there were carpenters, jewelers, farmers. farmers, and builders and all sorts. And that's how Amritsar became a really big business. And it was successful. Amanpri, um, could you explain a bit more? Yes. And so that business earned a lot, a lot of money. And so the profit that they made used to come to Ram Das Ji. Yeah. But Ram Das Ji didn't keep it for himself. He gave it out to people who were poor, who didn't have a really good job. And he told them to create their own business or to develop their business. Because normally at that time, the kings would actually take taxes and they would keep the money to themselves, wouldn't they? But Guru Amar Das Ji was amazing as he was given, giving his own money to the Sangat. And so Ram Das Ji was giving the money to the Sangat and later on when the, the person's business developed, if they had enough money to pay Ram Das Ji back, they would. And if they couldn't, Ram Das Ji didn't mind. So that's how nice Ram Das Ji was. He was amazing. And so Dib Ji, we know that Guru Amar Das Ji had two son-in-laws yeah. and that they were very worthy of the Guru Gaddi. So there must have been a way to settle who was Guru. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to tell you a little sake all about their tasks, both of the son-in-law's tasks. So Guru Amar Das Ji knew that both of, both of my son-in-laws are amazing and they're both worthy of the Guru Gaddi. But I need to choose one or another. So, let's t so he said to himself, well, let's set up a task for them. So Guru Amar Das Ji said, well, let's create, well, I want you two to create a thara. Now, what is a thara? A thara is basically, you know, in town, you go there, you see benches. And in those times, they didn't have benches, of course. No, they, they didn't. They made taras, which is basically like a seat made out of concrete or bricks. So that's what Guru Amar Das Ji wanted um, his son-in-laws to create. Um, his first son-in-laws, um, his first son-in-law was Ramaji, second one, Ram Das Ji. So they both started creating the taras. They worked so hard, putting all the things in, and they worked so hard. And But after a time, after they had made it, Guru Amar Das Ji thought to himself, well, I can't just give up now, I need to tell them to do some more until they, until they don't give up. So Guru Amar Das Ji said to them, well, it's okay, but could you make something more better? I mean, this Tara is okay, but something a bit better? So Guru Amar Das Ji told them to make it again and Ramaji and Ram Das Ji started to knock their down and build it again. And they waited and they started to make it and they worked hard again, hard as they could because they wanted to make it even better than the first one. Guru Amar Das Ji still gave a, re a negative reply. So they made it another three times. Now how many times is that in total? That's five times in total and if I had to make a thara five times I would be very, I would be upset because I've worked so hard so many times. I would be just, I would be annoyed. I will be exhausted if I had to do that. And so, but Ramaji and Ram Das Ji, they tried, but then Ramaji got angry. Ramaji said, well, I've tried a million times, five or six times, but this is not working. Guru Amar Das Ji, I think you you're losing your eyesight because you've gone old now. Maybe you can't see properly, but I think my thara is the best and I can't make any better than this. I'm going to give up. So, Guru Amar Das Ji didn't say anything. He let Ramaji go. But when Guru Amar Das Ji looked at Ram Das Ji, Ram Das Ji just smiled and said, well, 
I've tried my best, but I will try again for you until it's to your taste and to your perfection. Guru Amar Das Ji gave the Gurgaddi to Ram Das Ji. And um, so let's get let's talk about the moral of the story first, and then we'll move on to the Gurgaddi. Yes. So what is so? Do you understand the Sakhiyan? Could you tell us what the moral of the story is? So the moral of the story is that you need patience in day to day life. Yes, you so do. So if I was waiting at a bus stop, I need patience. Otherwise, you'll be angry all the time. You would go, oh well, I can't wait any longer. I'm just going to go. But you need patience, don't you? And what other things do you need patience and for? And when you're in a traffic jam on the motorway or anywhere else. It can take up to hours waiting in a traffic jam and you need patience then as well. Yes, yeah, so you need patience to day-to-day -day life. So let's move on to the Gurgaddi now. Yeah. Guru Amar Das Ji gave Gurgaddi to, Guru Ra to Ram Das Ji and then they became Guru. And so Guru, Ram das, uh, Guru Amar Das Ji gave the Gurgaddi in front of all of his family um, and the Sangat to Guru Ram Das Ji. Yeah, and Guru Ram Das, and when Guru Amar Das Ji bowed down to the next Guru, Guru Ram Das Ji, Guru Ram Das Ji had water in his eyes. Yes, and he said that, look, I was only a poor man from the streets of Lahore. I was a little child. You were the one who grabbed my arm. You were the one who helped me up and gave me a life, who gave me a reason to live. And now you have put me into such a high position. I cannot believe this. Please don't bow down to me. That's amazing, isn't it? And I can't believe that Guru Ram Das Ji was just like a person who had lost his parents. He was hopeful yeah. for everything to be better. And suddenly, because he followed the right path, he became Guru. So you should always follow the right path, shouldn't you? Yes. If you want to be good at your education, you need to follow the right path. You need to study. You need to get better at everything. And to get better at everything, you will need to follow the right path. If you choose the wrong path, you will go the wrong way. If you choose the right path, you will obviously go to the bright side of the path. So that's an amazing story and I can't believe Guru Ram Das Ji got Gurgaddi. It's amazing, isn't he? And now he's our fourth Guru. And then Guru Amar Das Ji, a few months later, had their Jyoti Jyot, so went to Vahe Guru. And so it was all up to Guru Shri Ram Guru Ram Das, Ram das Ji. And he had now all the responsibilities responsibilities he had to take them all up didn't he yes. and so what helped him um, to like take his responsibilities up so there was this group of Sikhs called the Masans they were a group of Sikhs who knew a lot about the Sikh religion so they were well taught so they had a very good education and so what did they do Dibji? well they normally went to city to city to state to state and even countries and they would go there and because the people in other cities or states they couldn't come all the way to Guru Amar Das Ji's Darbar to give them offerings. So the Masans were there to help. To, sorry, I mean Guru Ram Das Ji. So what happened, the Masans were there to help. They took the offerings and they would go um, like into lots of places and when they had all the news and updates and when they had all the offerings, they would come six months back later to Guru Ram Das Ji and they would give their offerings to them and update them with the latest news. Yes, and so that's what the Masans were there to help. But a few, um, a few years later, when it was Guru Gobind Singh Ji's time, what happened? Well, as the Ji just told you, at the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, the Masans, they were helpful at Guru Ram Das Ji's time, but uh, when it came to Guru Gobind Singh Ji's times, time, and after years of developing, the Masans became corrupt they started keeping the offerings for themselves. They didn't do their job properly. Their job was to help the followers to understand what Sikhism was, to so understand the religion. So they would only give a two minute speech when they came back to Guru Gobind Singh Ji or whoever was Guru at that time. And they would just say, oh, this is what happened there, this is what happened there, done. And so the updates weren't very good no. and the preachers that they gave wasn't very good either. Because man developed it and because um, first the people were really nice but as the people kept on replacing them and replacing them they became even worse. And so what did Guru Gobind Singh Ji do? Guru Gobind Singh Ji decided that this can't go on now because no. the Sikhs are learning wrong things yeah. and the offerings that the people have given were from their heart, they're not arriving to they're me. They're not arriving at all. So they stopped the Masans, didn't they? Yes. And so the Masans were no longer, they, they weren't any, there wasn't any person to help. No. So 
they stopped the Masans and so that's what the Masans were like. But obviously, before that, the Masans were amazing people. Yes. So that's all about the Masans. And now I think you've learned a lot about Guru Ram Das Ji. But we've got one special fact about them. In each show, whenever we t uh, talk about a person, we'll always have a special fact for you. So today's special fact is... Why don't you tell... Them, did you? Oh, of course. Well, do you know at weddings, at Sikh weddings, when you do you know when you go round the Guru Granth Sahib Ji four times, the people who's the bride and the groom, they he them two would go around the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, and do you know when that Girtan that is played when that happens? Well, what is that Girtan called? It's called the Lava Part. And do you know who created it? Yes, it's yeah. our fourth Guru, Guru Shri Guru Ram Das Ji. So they created the Lama. So whenever you go to a Sikh wedding, you can always say, Oh, that Keetan is from Guru Ram Das Ji. So that's our special fact for today. And Dib Ji, we had introduced our guests at the beginning. Yeah. I think they've brought along something to show us, haven't yes, they? Yes, they've brought their little surprise for us. So I think we should hand it over to them and see what they've made for us. So it's over to them. We have made a little poster about Shri Guru Ram Das Ji. This is Shri Guru Ram Das Ji. He was born in 1534 in Lahore. His Jyoti Jyot was in 1581. His father's name was Hardas Ji. His mother's name was Mata Deya Kaur Ji. His wife's name was Bibi Panni Ji. He had three children, Prithijan Ji, Mahadev Ji and Guru Arjan Dev Ji. The youngest. This is the right. This is the movement that in old Punjabi. This is how the writing used to be in Guruji's times. A picture of Amritsar when Guru uh, when Guru Ram Das Ji was alive. The Sarovar was dug up by his orders, and later on, the actual Harmandar Sahib was built. This is the picture of Guruji telling rights and wrongs in Sikhism. Lots and lots of people from different cities, towns and states used to come to visit Guruji and some of them even stayed over, so Bibi Paniji used to help. Guru Ram Das Ji also helped a lot in Siva. He was humble, honest and hard-working person. He showed respect to both the rich and poor as this picture illustrates. Thank you for watching, watching and listening. <laughs> It was really attractive and colourful, wasn't it? Yes, it summarised what we did in our show. It told us about Guru Ram Das Ji, their family, and it basically just told us everything. So if you'd like, your own, you'd like to make your own poster, then please go on Akal Channel, the website, and then go onto the homepage, the tab Akal Kids, and then you can send it on that and look at our website as well. So I wish you liked today's show. And I wish you learnt a lot about Shri Guru Ram Das Ji, our fourth guru. And we will be back. But till then, Vahiguji ka khasa, Vahiguji ki fate. Vahi